Now I know what you guys are thinking. Wasn't this a stop motion channel? Why is he doing Blender now? And I have to be honest, it's a fair point. But let me explain with an example. Let's say you're an artist from the late 20th century and you've been drawing and painting on, let's say, a traditional canvas ever since you can remember. Now, because Photoshop and other digital drawing software only started to truly emerge in the very early 2000s, it will probably give you loose ground on what your artistic future holds. However, we have to remember that artists and animators alike don't need a specific tool or software, but the knowledge and rules of the medium instead. This can be applied to my channel on YouTube. Although I'm, ex I'm expressing new tools and mediums, I think it still remains true to the rules and boundaries of what animation is. So what is animation? I like to think of animation as the illusion of movement. The illusion of movement can be portrayed in many different ways, on paper, in a computer, and also even sculpting clay moving it around, taking pictures every single time you move it. The processes of these might be different, but the outcomes are more or less the same when looking at it holistically. Now some could argue that I have moved to CG because stop motion is dying, and they are not wrong, stop motion is dying. In fact, there is only one of many hundreds of animation studios in America who still use the medium to this day. That studio's name is Leica and they have created features such as the box trolls, Caroline, Coop and the Two Strings, and the fairly new Missing Link. So at this point you might be scratching your head. If stop motion is dying, then why is it a, hu is a huge animation studio such as Leica uh, still using it in their films? Well, unfortunately, this is not a straightforward answer. It's not a straightforward answer, and a lot of it depends on the current status of technology. You see, my guess is, is that the reason why they are still so fond of stop motion is because it's actually cheaper to produce than a fully fledged computer generated film. But th by this point, you might want to click off the video. And please, do as you will. But a lot of you may know that it is so much cheaper to create a city on the computer than it is to create a miniature version in real life. And I would say fair point. But what if I told you that Leica uses CG in their movies already? In fact, around half of their movies contain CGI, computer generated imagery. So what's the catch? Why are they using stop motion? Well, this brings me to my second guess of why Leica loves the medium of stop motion so much. It is because it's actually unbeatable, literally at least in the realms of photorealism. This is because you're not rec recreating anything on the computer, but instead simply taking a picture of what's in front of you. And if you also notice, most of the CGI in Leica's films is only gear geared towards crowds, backgrounds, and liquids, as it would be harder and more expensive to recreate in the real world. It also doesn't attract the viewer's eye as much and still keeps the aesthetic of stop motion present. So why are Pixar and Disney films so much more expensive to make than stop motion films? Well, the answer might surprise you, as it is not the modeling and animating itself that is to blame, but the hardware used to render all of it. The fairly new Disney movie Coco had a budget of around $175 million dollars compared to Kubo and the Two Strings from Leica, which had a budget of 60 million. So why is it such a big difference? It's definitely not coming from the runtime, as there is less than a 10 minute gap between both of them. And it's definitely not coming from the salaries, as stop motion animators are actually paid more holistically than CGI animators. What I theorize this difference is coming from is nothing to do with salaries or artists it would most likely be due to the rendering of the film. Now because stop motion films such as Kubo and the Two Strings only need to be captured and partly rendered on the computer, it wouldn't take that much time even if it was a standard gaming computer. But when we tried to render a huge feature such as Coco, the amount of time it would take in order to render one frame would take years on a standard gaming laptop. 
and these studios don't have yours, especially Disney. So what they do is hire render farms to render it for them. This is what is most likely driving the budget of CG animated films such as Coco, up the wall. But in conclusion, we are living in an interesting time, where things are changing faster than we ever thought possible. We animators can only dream of what is to be in store for us in the future. But for now, I'm going to stick with a mixture of stop motion and CG content, as I personally believe the transition has already started. It is also healthy to keep an open perspective on the world, because life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Thanks so much for checking out this video guys, and I hope to see you soon. If you're not subscribed to this channel already, be sure to do so, and not miss any other videos by doing, by doing that. If you found this video helpful and you liked it a lot, be sure to give it a like. Sealish Productions out.